So following on from the previous video, it, we started out with our mean value theorem here. Um, and then don't forget C, don't forget this C here exists somewhere in between A and B. So if you can find a way to realize that, um, that in, in the interval between A and B, if you can find, somehow find a way to realize that F prime of B must always be positive, must always be positive, then it would imply that F of A, F of B, is bigger than f of a, meaning that your graph will will be climbing. Okay, and then uh, and then if uh, if somehow you you uh, you can find a way to realize that in the interval between a and b, um, f prime must always be negative. If 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 somehow you can find a way to realize that f prime must always be negative, then it would imply that um, that f of b would be less than f of a, meaning your graph will be falling. And then if, uh, if somehow you can find a way to show that um, f prime of c must be zero, then, then it would imply that uh, f of a equals f of b. Okay, so, so this is a summary of the previous video. So now I'm going to give you an example. So, um, so now how would you go about proving this? Um, how, how would you go about proving that e, of, e to the power of x will always be greater than, than x plus 1 for x being bigger than uh, than zero. Okay, so to do this here, we would define a function, defi define a function, and just define it as this, take away this. So, uh, so let's just define a function to be this. Okay. Now, when you differentiate it, it will it will give you this. But when you look at when you look at e to the power of x, the graph will look something like this. Uh, e to the power of x. Don't forget this here is one. But then, but then realize that e um, re realize that in the interval, um, uh, big, where, where x is bigger than zero, so all the way up here, in this, in this, um, in this area here, um, f prime is all, will, f prime will always be positive. Now, if f prime is, is always positive, then it means that the original f must always be climbing. This, this, um, this graph here must always be this function here must always be climbing, okay? Because because we 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 we, uh, we realize that in in um, we realize that when when looking at f prime, uh, we realize that for x being bigger than zero, f prime will always be a positive number. Now, if f prime is a positive number, then it would imply that the original function must always be climbing, okay? So now. Now, now select the, the lowest point. Let's, let's say, uh, f of zero. Now, if you put an f, um, uh, well, don't, don't forget it. When, when we were here, um, it, we, we realized that f, this here, uh, is always positive. So it would imply that f is always climbing. So, 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 um, so select a, a, a point that's really low. Let's say, um, let's say f of zero. f of zero. When you put this into the original function, so f of zero, Put it into here. Put zero into here. That would then give you zero. That would then give you zero. So f of zero equals equals zero. Now, from when when we were looking at this here, f prime uh, must always be positive. Well, if f prime is always positive, it it must imply that f the original f of x must always be climbing. Now, well, if if it's always if it's always climbing, then any any x bigger than zero uh, must always be bigger than the previous, if that makes sense. So what we can deduce here is that um, select something that's really low, then 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 the next value, the the uh, the the what the x just to the right of zero must must be bigger must must be bigger than than f of zero here. Okay. So we don't forget f of z f of x here f of x here was defined as this. So now, now set this, well, get, now set this to be the same, at, well, to be bigger than, than zero here. So hang on, I'm not explaining this very well, sorry. So, so we realize that f of x here must always be bigger than f of zero. So this here is your f of x, it must be bigger than zero. So now, now, uh, now visualize it as, as one block taking away this block here, add this block to both sides, that will then give you this. So therefore, um, e of x must always be bigger than 
uh, than x plus 1. The key to doing this is really to realize that, uh, well, once you've realized that this here must always be bigger than 0, then if, it's, if the gradient is, is always bigger than 0, it must mean that the original function must always be climbing. If, if the original function is always climbing, then, then, then if, you, if, at, if at your lowest point is, is f of 0, then so, so if f of 0, anything to the right of f of 0 here, the graph must always be climbing. So anything to the right of 0 here, well, anything to the right of 0 must be, anything to the right of 0 must be bigger than, than, uh, than the lowest point here, because your graph is always climbing. So from this, put, put your original f of x into here. Remember the, the f of x, the original f of x was defined as this. So put that, um, so that will always be greater than 0 here, and then add that block to both sides, that will then give you this. Okay, so, so here we, we prove that, um, that this must always be bigger than this. The next question is, what about this? Can, can we truly say that this will be bigger than this? So, so earlier it was this, but then we're going to add an extra bit here. Can we truly say this? Um, can we truly say that this will, be, will always be bigger than, than this?